What is up, everybody? I'm joined today by some of the legends in the space, Comics and Crypto, Danny BR and VV Magic at this pivotal time in Disney history, which has been confirmed as the last golden moments that have dropped. And, you know, we've got a lot to talk about today. We want to talk about utility. You know, we want to talk about, you know, the future of Disney and where that's going to be going. And we've got a lot of questions that we want to, you know, get through. And then on top of that, we're going to be actually viewing a lot of the comments that some of the community members have made on utility and what their thoughts are as well. So what's up? Did you guys, uh, did you guys get the lamp? What happened? <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Still uh, depressed. Negative. No. <laughs> What's yeah, like what happened? Yeah. AMU, did you go through it? Did you get it or not? I did. I got it. Um, yeah. yeah I, to be honest, I'm surprised I even got it because it's a, uh, I timed it perfect. Or I thought I timed it perfectly. And then I pushed it too early, like literally a fraction of a second early. And then you, you, <laughs> you're pretty much guaranteed lost it. Um, and I just pushed it again. And I ended up getting, it ended up coming through. So I've no idea how I managed to get that. Um, but yeah, it popped up and I pushed purchase. And then it said failed transaction. It came up with try again. <laughs> But luckily it was it was there in the end so thank god um but yeah unfortunately lo- lo- i thought everyone would have got it because i obviously messed up the drop uh but loads of people didn't get it but like none of my friends got it um i only know probably about 50 50 50 got it you know like, the people i know so seem to be quite lucky nice yeah yeah my uh everyone in the house didn't get it but uh my my girl actually who's a huge fan of aladdin it's her favorite disney film Actually, I got her a little, I got her a magic lamp necklace at San Diego Comic-Con. And she's been wearing it for the, yeah, I know you like that. <laughs> she's, been, she's been wearing that for the past maybe month, every wow. day. So she's wearing it this morning and she's the only one to get the, the drop. And it was her very first drop and she's just glowing right now. So wow. she's been playing with it all morning. Yeah, she loves Meant it. To yeah. be. <laughs> Meant to be. It was super cool. <laughs> That's sweet. And VV Magic, you didn't get it, right? No, and I'm like very much in my feelings about it. <laughs> I literally like I literally cried a little bit. I was very upset. Um, yeah. I I had like my computer next to my my router, and I did all the tricks and unplugged every other device in my house. I mean, I did whatever you name it. I did it, and I just yeah. And I even had good speeds, but I was, I don't know, just not meant to be. But I went. I will say I'm grateful because I was able to get it relatively quickly on the market. So that's good. awesome. And I yeah. think it's pretty good. Like that utility that hurts, like yeah. Stinks. <laughs> Long term, I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> <I hope so. laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't too bad on the market as well. Well, I found I bought a couple on the market after, um, but I couldn't for eight. They kept all of them reserved up until like yeah. for the first. I was trying to buy them for so long. Um, I ended up paying. What did I pay? I think I paid 150 for the first one. And then I think I paid about 180 for the next one. Cause I was going all the way up to 250. I couldn't get anything. So I just bought another one. I'm not Did sure. you mid hunt? Nah, I didn't this time because I was just, ugh, I don't know. There was a 57 there, which would have matched my Walt. And I was like, so tempted to go for it, but it was a little bit, a little bit pricey. It was like, I think it was like yeah. four, four K. Um, if it goes down to like, I'll, I'll keep watching it. I'm not sure if it's gone yet, but. If the guy's watching, then um, perhaps we can reach out and we can work out something. But, well, I feel uh, better now. Then I got mine for I think eighty-seven. So. Yeah, I probably I obviously overpaid. So, but I do, I got one on drop. So there you go. I feel I feel like a DCA. Just DCA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, question for you guys. So, okay, so I was a little confused with this whole drop thing because they said, okay, you have to get the lamp, and then as soon as you're the original purchase of the lamp, then you get automatically the D. <laughs> sent to you let's get out of the way <laughs> that's the way to put it and then you have a reservation code for mickey and so here i am holding the lamp and i as you guys know i never get the drop so i was super ecstatic but then everyone's like sell it because you don't have to hold it in order to get these other things which i didn't even really know or take in so then i sell it at like and i sold it for 180 so i actually did good <laughs> thinking that i can buy it yeah i was gonna say i probably bought it <laughs> you were probably bought it <laughs> I paid 180 for the second one. Okay. <laughs> That's right. 7306. But I've just got I've got to look now. I just think it's probably not, but that would no, be 50, funny. 5606 minus this oh, the one I bought. That's close, close enough. Yeah, it is 06, it's 06 again. Yeah. 5606. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and then what and then did you see my tweet? <laughs> no, you said what, like what a steal or something, or what did you say? No, no, no. I said it was about the um like I basically said, wouldn't it be funny? 
if the people that said, that that paper handed the drop didn't get oh. the didn't get the D. <laughs> Man, that would be fair to be honest, because it was like I it's incentivizing flipping, right? Like it's incentivizing getting that and taking advantage of a system and getting rid of it. So what do you guys think about like, you know, long-term hodling and stuff? Like, like I feel bad for a lot of these people that have like the entire Disney Golden Moment set completed and they maybe missed the drop like VV Magic today. And then they got to go buy stuff for somebody like me. I, I get it, flip it, you know what I'm trying to say? So like, do you think we're going to get there? Like, I know that like, for instance, Club 424 had that airdrop sent to them, like the um, Raptors because people are holding a certain amount of things. So I wonder, is that going to happen with the Disney Golden Moments? Like, I don't know, maybe we can start with, um, you know, VV Magic and then go to Sean and Danny. What do you think? Yeah, um, I put out a tweet this morning saying that, you know, I was a little bit in my feelings. So <laughs> I'm not, congratulations, but leave me be. I can sulk too, it's all right. <laughs> and um, it, it was interesting because there were a few comments of people that were a little frustrated that like, you know, it would have been nice to have that reward if we've, you know, there's, there's not that many people that have like the full setup until now. And, um, I certainly would have loved that to have, um, you know, if I was holding the full set, sort of get whitelisted for that drop. So a little bum, but it is what yeah. it is, but you know, I'm still going to, I'm still going to complete the set. Um, and who knows? I mean, I would love to see that. And the fact that it's like sort of being teased right now that way, like, you know, I could see something happen in the future. If the, if the last drop is giving utility, then holding the set, what could, what could that mean? Like, mm. you know, I, I think that could mean more. I mean, I would love to see airdrops I, or, or, you know, some sort of access or whatever, you know, just different types of utility would be great. But, you know, uh, golden moments, I feel like was one of the first things that we all sort of spoke about utility with and to see now actually it comes to fruition in any sort of way, I think is, is very mm. positive. Right. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. It was tough, right? We didn't know how many there were going to be because a lot of the statues were representations of the Fab 50 at Disneyland. So like, are there going to be 50 of these? Am I going to have to figure out, like take out loans, like buy all these <laughs> things? <laughs> how long is this going to go on? But now that it's come to an end and they emphasize the finale, I mean, it, this is it guys. I mean, it's not good. They're not going to make any more. Disney won't do that. It'll, it'll hurt their credibility. In my opinion, if they mm. said this, is the finale and they release more gold moments later on, at the, yeah, I just don't, I don't see that happening. They're not going to do that. They're going to release other cool things, but like, this is a really special set. This is a really special set. And I think long-term, we're going to see a lot of cool utility for the entire collection, but also possibly even for individual NFTs as well within the collection. Like they're going to try to figure out ways to create value across the entire collection. I think at least. Um, was wait, Did that answer your question? Yeah, hundred <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> percent. Yeah. yeah, that was great. Okay. Yeah. If uh yeah, because initially the golden moments were I mean, did you I mean you guys were obviously in from the beginning, uh VV Magic. I'm not sure if you were you've been from the beginning of Golden Moments, but uh it's we all thought originally the first set that was all that were gonna be. Like, do you remember we all thought that that was all that it was gonna be? Yeah. And then they announced the second load and everyone was like, mm, I thought this was meant to be the only set. Um, I'm sort of glad they've stopped it now and like sort of put a pin in it because it's like okay. This, this gives this set, like, we know there's not going to be any more. It's not going to be diluted anymore because there could easily have been 50. And I honestly think that Disney would have released all 50, to be honest. I, I feel like Vivi must have said, look, this is not going to work if we release all of these. I feel like they're going to say that this is not working. It's going to dilute the market too much because we seriously, I mean, I, I mean, I overpaid for so many of these. Like I've got, I've got a lot of them, but I must, like, compared to what they are now, I've seriously overpaid for a lot of them luckily i was in early enough so it doesn't really affect me as much but mm. yeah it's uh it's, it's it has diluted the market but i think this is a good good sign and, and the fact that they've released uh at least teasings of airdrops like they're gonna they're gonna confirm an airdrop with uh, the d and uh, <laughs> why is that i feel like that's a troll is that i'm sure it's, it's like a troll. not gonna be funny yeah <laughs> do, you, do you think i'm certain, I'm certain it's a troll um <laughs> Talking but, yeah, about the D. Like be, exactly. <laughs> but I feel like that this is confirmed with the airdrop, so it's good for the future. It shows that they're 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 looking at this, you know. The airdrops are and utility is on their is on their radar. Right. So talking about that, these are all amazing points. I actually wanted to show you the D and I wanted to basically give you my collectibles take <laughs> right. on it, where he actually puts it in his top three 
of all time golden moments. And then David, you comments on it saying he thinks the letter D is like amazing or something like that. So um, let me show you this tweet because I think it was important. Can you guys see that? Okay. Yeah. So look at this. So my collectible goes the three most important Disney golden moments. In my opinion, I see Walt as number one, R2 is number two and the Disney logo as number three. What do you think? And then David's like, I think letter D. So I'm like, to me, I'll be honest with you. I didn't think it was that big of a deal. The Disney logo. I think it's kind of, maybe you could see it like it encompasses everything, but what is everyone's thoughts on this? Yeah, I haven't really given it much thought to be honest, because it's, uh, I mean, is he saying that because his name begins with D? Because if that's the case, then I think it's super special as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you never know with David, though, do you? Um, but no, but yeah, I mean, I hadn't really given it too much thought. I personally would have looked at it and thought that it's uh, it's just a letter. Obviously, it's the beginning of the Disney logo, but it's the first time they have their branding like out there, really. I mean, obviously, they've got like their characters, but it's their first of their actual, do you know what I mean, their, their, their logo. So I don't know. You, probably, you guys are probably a bit more qualified to talk about it than me, but I never thought it was going to be probably top, top five. But um, that's just my opinion. But mm-hmm. yeah, I hadn't. Um, I'm actually looking up something really quick. I hadn't um, seen that that tweet yet, um, so I didn't even know that that. Um, so okay, so wh- why the D I think is kind of important too is because it's it's Walt's signature, like you know. So it it is very much tied to him and the brand. Um, so it's like historically significant because it like mimics the signature. So I get that. Um, so yeah, I hadn't, but I got, I hadn't really even like categorized them. I hadn't put it into like a, a hierarchy. I don't know that I agree with that, but I mean, you know, maybe that's the one letter that's gonna, if you, you know, have that complete in your set, maybe that's the one that's gonna help you get, <laughs> that's gonna help you get um, more, more utility. I don't know. Right. Yeah, it's also the last drop in the collection, right? That's right. kind of cool. Um, hmm. yeah. That's a good point too. Yeah. But other than, other than that, like, what else is it? Like, why? What was his? Did he give a reason for why he thought it was top three? I think it was the signature aspect. Um, he didn't really go into detail, and I think it's also the fact that Disney's logo kind of encompasses the Disney brand, similar to how we kind yeah. of see Walt. Is that I that's why? That. And then he yeah. ranked it. And, um, you know, so one thing I just want to also point out here is like with the lamp, right? Because if you look at all these golden moments, right, there's a total of what, 20? Yeah. Look at the lamp. It's the only one that's actually animated within the entire set. Like I might not be a big deal, but if you think about it, like everything is just pure gold and it's just kind of like simplistic. And Mm -hmm. then that just adds a bit of a flair. It makes you wonder if there could be something else in the future or if it was just the way it was designed, right? It looks so cool. It looks yeah. so cool. It's really impressive. Yeah. Yeah, the quality is super nice on it. Because, you know, there's people who are upset with some of them, like, looking shinier than others or just the... Um, and I haven't zoomed in on it, but, I mean, just from this ratio, it looks really nice. Right. I mean, Elsa's the one with the most detail on. If you looked at Elsa in, like, close AR, like, Elsa's got so much more detail than than any of them, I think. Like, it's like there's, like, a 100 times more detail than, than the majority of them. Yeah, I would probably have her in top three or five personally. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think it'd be Walt, R2, then, yeah, Elsa or C3PO, and then perhaps the hat for me. Um, I would agree with that. Yeah, Yeah. Uh, top five. So I have a question for you guys. Do you, now that, now that we've gotten to the finale and I haven't looked at market prices at all, I mean, I just got off a plane at midnight, but uh, Mm. the... Do, do you see like the prices now um, sort of trending upwards now that everyone has it secure that we're not getting any more? What do you think is going to happen market-wise with these? Yeah, I think they moved up about 20% off the bat, didn't they? As soon as they announced it was the finale, then they sort of moved about 20% and then sort of leveled off a little bit above market. Um, I feel like they will go up now after they uh, after more things start being released. But I think now it's sort of like you can sort of encompass that as a whole OG set. Obviously, you've got so many different branches of it, but I think they will start to move up now. Like they're gonna, especially if they announce they could announce any utility. Thing is, the, the the risk is they announce utility for the whole set or a part of the set, and the whole set completely moves. So like imagine they imagine they say that they release like you get fifty percent off if you have the whole set or you have a certain piece of the set or you can go into certain areas. 
right. then the whole the whole collection just moons overnight and i'm i'm not going to be sat around like trying to buy them when everyone's trying to buy them you know i'd rather have them now at these prices um and just and just wait you know? yeah yeah you definitely wanted to get involved if you if you have any intention of getting this set now might be the best time to do it because yeah. once they make that announcement I, man because you're, that's the thing right that's the thing about the utility behind these i mean how are we going to attract disney fans that aren't involved in, in web3 well you right. tie it to things that they're familiar with that they understand that's how you're going to get them excited about this right mm -hmm. which i think is inevitable and it's going to happen when that happens man when those disney fans get involved as vivi magic i'm sure you <laughs> lights out lights out but i don't i will say i don't i don't anticipate them announcing any utility until transfers are enabled because people have collectibles across on different you know accounts yeah, of that's, they're not so they're not going to probably even announce it until that's back so that's yeah. kind of like a, a window you can kind of reference maybe potentially that's yeah. a good point yeah or crypto being enabled as well i think like if for them to announce that i feel like yeah. either it's either they go one of two ways they either want the collectibles to be worth as much as possible in which case crypto has to be enabled like you have to be able to buy with omi or ethereum like for that for the major money to come in because otherwise if you can maximum buy 500 dollars at a time and the, the floor price for a golden moment is 2K, it's going to take you all day to load even up enough money to buy the whole set. So realistically, people need to be moved liquidity in and out like easily for mm. it to be, for it to moon, you know, like the way we think it's going to. So uh, there's a lot of stuff they have to put in place before I think they're going to announce. Like, it's like saying if they were going to announce Pokemon, like they would never do that without having everything in place first and having the capacity. Remember, they, we thought they were going to announce it when the app couldn't even hold, like it would crash every time that there was a decent drop. <laughs> uh, there's just no way there. So I think they're years off announcing it, to be honest. If they do, like, we think they've got it, but I think they're years off even, because uh, it's such a, it'd be a squandered opportunity if, if it, do you know what I mean? If it didn't go right, you've got to be, it's got to be done right if they do have that. Yeah. So many good points. And uh, I also want to just thank uh, Vivi Magic for showing up. She just got off a flight literally like, I don't know, like 12-ish hours ago from friggin' France and uh, was at the London Decon. So I wanted to like just shoot, you know, pick your brain. It's like, how was it? Like, do you have a blast? And who'd you meet and what'd you do? Oh, it was awesome. Yeah, it was more than I could have uh, ever hoped for. It just really good time. So fun to meet so many people that I've talked to and like have just in-person conversations. Um, got to see people that I have seen at like, you know, the, the Glendale event, there was a few of us um, and people that I talk to in spaces all the time. Cause I try to be everywhere as much as I can cause I really want to be involved with like kind of all aspects of the community. Um, and so to, to meet, you know, we had like this whole we had a great picture of this whole um, Twitter spaces crew, you know and like um, the French spaces and the Dutch spaces. And just to, to be in a place where you have all these countries and dialects and and people from different walks of life all getting together in one place for just the pure joy of this app and and just wanting to be together and share in that and like all positive vibes it just how can you not have a good time you know like it was just it was super fun wow so yeah. sick Oh, I'm jealous. Like, honestly, I, I keep seeing the videos and pictures and like the crazy <laughs> part is, is like, it looked like it's at another level now. Like when I saw some of those lineups and people in it, I was like, whoa, like, what is this? Like, this is Vivi. You know what I mean? Like there's probably hundreds of thousands of big fans around the world. And like, that's just one event. So mm -hmm. I haven't even been to one of these events yet. I know that Sean, you went to the one that with Vivi Magic in LA, right? You've been to a few, I think. And I think you're off to New York Comic Con too. I was at the original, ones. yeah, I was at the original yeah. uh, designer con last year. I went to that one and that was surreal because that was the first time we, everyone really kind of met each other right. for the most part. Um, and then I went to San Diego Comic Con. Um, but that's, yeah, that's it so far. Nice. And Danny, yeah, you and I have yet to go to one, right, bro? Haven't been yet, mate, mate. I should have gone to this one in London. It's like, it wasn't even that far away from me, but um, yeah. yeah, I should have gone to be fair. It looks manic though, because it was like, I've seen like videos. At one point I was like, okay, maybe I'm glad I didn't go because I've seen like crowds of people and there's like 200, 300 people in a queue and then everyone's just like sprinting. Like down what was that like, about? I that know. was madness. Like, so <laughs> to be fair, I didn't actually spend a whole lot of time at the event itself. Like I was very much there for like the social networking. We'll call it that. 
<laughs> I like your style. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But no, truly, like, I mean, I wanted to get to know um, the people and the team, like on a more personal level and like show, yeah. you know, I my commitment. I'm here for like this, you know, like I'm I'm in it for the long run. So that was kind of more my goal. Um, yeah, I like to get the shirt and everything would have been cool, but it wasn't, you know, my ultimate thing. So I wasn't even there for that. Um, but I guess it was more of like a, um, a way that the, that people there sort of handled the line. It, it could have been, um, handled a little bit more constructively so that there wasn't that mass chaos, because I guess when they opened it up, it sort of was like a, a wide opening and everybody just Ran, sort of yeah. went <laughs> instead of being like organized and whatever. And then it was kind of like every man for himself. Like, yeah, if you, if you are in the U S that is very much what black Friday is like. <laughs> but you know i'm kind of the same as danny like i i don't like crowds i that mm. that even seeing a video gave me anxiety so yeah, that's what it put me off i was like okay well, i'm sort of glad i'm not there now like, <laughs> yeah i was okay to, i was okay to miss that 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 part but that was the only time that it was like that and then um the after event they didn't realize how big it was going to be um so that would be like constructive criticism of the future is but the glendale event you had to um reserve tickets so that kind of gave them a head count mm. so i think that would be good moving forward and it wasn't you didn't have to buy them just just a head count um moving forward i think that would be a really good um thing for them to do for every event so they know exactly how many people are going to be there and that yeah. way you kind of know um what you're going to need for if you decide to do like a, a hosted event afterwards um so there was a lot of people and um, we stood in the line for that too for an hour and that was organized it wasn't chaotic um to to get into the the little after event after um, decon was over. Wow. Especially if you've got 1.5 million people in your app, you must expect a full room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's crazy. So one thing that I wanted to also talk about was um, the VV sign, because you know in order to get one of those things, you had to be at one of these events and you had to approach the founders yourself to get one. Um, so you know, do you think that this is just like a sign? Or could we like speculate on what this sign could mean something else? Or is it just a sign? Is it just people that are supporting the logo? And one thing that really stuck out to me was like what Sean said earlier, like before we got on this chat was like, who would spend 5k for a sign of a company? Like what is, you know, this is insane, right? So clearly people really love VV. So I just wanted to pick your brain on this. Like, is this, is this just a sign or is it something else? Yeah, the, um, I thought it was a joke. I honestly thought it was a joke when like Alex said like, Hey, if you get a tattoo and show me, I'll give you a logo card. And I was actually next to him. And I was like, I was like, dude, do you know that everyone thinks you're serious about this like tattoo thing? Like that people are going and getting them. He's like, I'm 100% serious. I was like, Oh, <laughs> I wow. thought that was a joke. He's like, no, I didn't even know that. if they get a tattoo know. and they come show me the tattoo, there was people that put on fake tattoos. Like, how did you even figure out a way to do that first of all but <laughs> brilliant <laughs> right and then i'm like secondly respect that's pretty smart <laughs> but there was people that actually did that it got tattooed and they got their logo cards and i mean come on if somebody is inking their body with this logo i hope there's going to be something in it for them if not mm, how do you kidding. sleep at night <laughs> i don't know have you seen some people's tattoos <laughs> is, uh, <laughs> To be fair, Chad, your brother's like a tattoo artist, isn't he? You could just put one on you and then he you could. can get one. He could. I, I have yet to get a tattoo yet, but um, put it this way. If there's another opportunity at, uh, I don't know, the New York Comic Con where you had to get a tattoo to, for, to get like, I don't know, a secret rare Pikachu, I'm, I'll am i get my whole fucking chest done. <laughs> <laughs> Same size. Same size. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's not funny. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, these these signs are special. I mean, there's only 500 of them, so they're going to give them out at events, you know, until they're pretty much gone, right? Yeah. So they probably still have some left, but yeah, I mean, the, the thing is, it's really special about these signs, the potential utility that could come with them, right? Like they could they could add whatever utility they want within the company because it's their it's their IP. That's super oh, special, right? Super special. That's a good point. There's no you know no, doors to knock on for whatever they want to do if it's vvip so i think that's like really unique you're right if this company blows up the way we all believe it's going to i mean that sign could be worth as much as any collectible on vv right but it's possible which is yeah. crazy to think about so it is crazy did you have to ask so do, how did so did the old the whole, obviously we weren't there so what was the whole process like because obviously we see loads of people having pictures with them were they just picking and choosing because surely i'd have thought everyone that went up and had a picture of them would have been asking can i have a fucking logo <laughs> that's that's how i thought it was going to go and then they'd all be gone 
because there was obviously hundreds of people there uh, and loads of people were getting pictures. So did they not ask everybody? Was everyone not asking or do you well, know what I mean? How did it work? Yeah. So Comic-Con that Sean went to was so small that I think basically the vast majority of people that walked up and, and said hi to them got it because oh, right. of, of actual VV people, there really right. weren't that many. Um, yeah. <clears throat> this event was obviously much larger. So um, it wasn't, yeah, it was again, the tattoo. And then um, at the after party, uh, Alex was feeling uh, generous and he, um, three people came up and did like pretty um, awesome dance moves. And, uh, and so he's like, they deserve logos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So and that was fun. Yeah. So, you know, they're, they're, they're definitely now having to be a little bit more picky now that, you know, yeah. these events are like, uh, New York would probably be the same. I'm, I assume, I don't know, but it, it's going to be a fairly decent crowd. So they can't give them to everybody. So hmm. they may, you know, they were doing giveaways too, throughout the time. Um, they were doing shirts and like Toki Doki and, um, I can't remember everything, but there was a lot of giveaways. And so they did, you know, just on the spot, they do some sort of trivia or, They'd have everybody go on the app and say, do you have a three digit Myrmicorn, you know, just all that kind of stuff um, for, for the giveaway. So they'll probably, my guess is they'll probably come up with some sort of Sweet. idea of how they want to give out more in New York. But I'm already, I'm already having FOMO, especially knowing that two of my favorite people are going to be there. I want to go. <laughs> See you there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and figure out a way. <laughs> yeah, we'll fly in. And then I think David, you slipped, did he not? About like Star Wars ships or something? He's like, we've got two on the way. And I was like, what is this going to be Boba Fett's ship? And should I go buy Boba Fett? Like, or, or, or is this marketing affiliation? <laughs> Chad, I love how you're whispering. Do you guys hear about that? Like, yeah. <laughs> 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 it's pretty yeah, wild, though. Like, that's what I love about David. He's so genuine that, like, if you just catch him yeah. on the right day, like, you might yeah, find yeah. out the biggest, darkest secrets behind VV, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that AMA was amazing. It was really cool. Yeah, it was. And and I loved because I I've been saying this for the past year, and I know we've all kind of feel this probably so probably feel the same way. Um, but the app is a work in progress, and we felt they've held back from marketing because they know that it can't like to Danny pointed out earlier it can't handle X amount of users yet. Yeah. And, and David brought that up. He talked about that in the AMA, and he said, "Yeah, we we don't want to discourage people from using our app because it's not ready, right?" So we want we don't want to have five million people. We want to have fifty million people. We want to have a hundred million people on our right. app. Like that's their goal. So they know the long term vision. So they're like holding back and just making sure. Why would you invite anybody over at, for a house party if the house isn't finished being built yet? You know, yeah. I, I love that analogy. Yeah, it's perfect. It's, it's so spot. Yeah, it's spot on. It's exactly how I think what's going on right now. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's been like frustrating for me too. Is I've sort of like just in my gut felt that because you know I'm. I'm a, fairly versed in marketing and it, it just, it just made sense. But, you know, because everybody is so, you know, the IP is here and, and the collectibles are here. And so because of that, everybody is just so impatient to, mm. they think because those things are here, then everything else should be here. And it's like, it's still in a growth cycle. Like it's still growing every single day. This is still kind of a startup. Um, so yeah, I mean, that, that analogy you did, Sean, it's just like so spot on about, it's just, we're still not fully there i mean we see it every day there's there's glitches here and there so why are you going to market and then have people come and have a horrible experience mm. i mean that's yeah. that's going to make your app fail is if you yep. push too hard too fast then it's going to fail like yeah. let's just continue this slow and steady build and keep putting out good content and and keep improving the app and you know keep listening to the community and and how to you know get to the next step and that's the long the long-term goals are going to get hit right that's how you know it's not a money grab as well. Because if it was, yeah. they'd be yeah. pushing. They'd be pushing to get right. We need as many people in the app. We need them all sold out. But it's not. They're not doing that. So, and there's only yeah. one reason a crypto or a, do you know what I mean? It, you know it's legit because if you've been in crypto as long as a lot of us have, or if you've been in NFTs, if you've ever bought an NFT that uh, is is from on OpenSea or anything like that. I mean, I've been rubbed more times on OpenSea than I, than I have not been rubbed. You know, it's just a, yeah. it, it's, you're taking like a 50-50 gamble. Most of the time, it's like a rug. It's like 80 to, 80 to 20%. You might get you might get one good one out of 10, you know? Right. Um, and the rest of them are just like, it's a, okay, the guy, the, 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 the founders run off with 200 ETH. <laughs> All right, well, we'll try the next one. And it's a, it's, it's a minefield out there, you know? And this is how you know that they're legit. Because otherwise, they wouldn't be putting on events like this. 
it's you can see their long-term vision so it's sort of if anything it's a vote of confidence for for, for us because you can see that they're a legit company because they're not well, pushing it and and listening to us too and, and tailoring the um the drops a little bit right we're seeing the mint sizes decrease or we're seeing yeah. seeing the rarities decrease right. and yeah can't call that a cash grab because they could just be putting out all those mints and want more and more, but they're listening and they're, and they're changing those. Yeah. Uh, to, to add to that, like we mentioned earlier, uh, a 15, I know Reese talked about this, how they, you know, he feels Marvel is just being generous to the community. They didn't market the comic because they didn't want people like a bunch of randos coming in to try to compete for the comic. Yeah. They could have dropped it for a hundred dollars, $200, $300. They could have dropped that yeah. for as much yeah. as they want. And it would have sold out immediately, but they only yeah. charged people $20. That yeah. was not a cash grab. And no. They know the value of that comic. They know the long term vision, and it's yeah. gonna it's gonna pay off. I mean, like right now, we understand. You know, it's it's tough because everything's dipping. The vault went from forty down to, to about five, and people who don't really understand the situation are like, "Well, what's going on? Is this thing even working anymore?" Well, mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, guys. Like this is why when they finally announced the finale of the Golden Moments, why I like literally got goosebumps. Because I know that, okay, well, they're not making any more money off the golden moments. So the only value they can do right now is add utility for secondary right. sales. And they're yeah. incentivized to do so. If you don't think that they're going to want to make Walt Disney, the founder of Disney, the most valuable NFT in all of Web3, you're surely mistaken. Like mm -hmm. they want that thing to be as worth as much as possible. I mean, it's $333 right off the bat, 4,333 editions. It, very scarce considering the IP. That right, thing yeah. is going to be a monster. Oh, I haven't breathed for like two minutes. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Preach. Uh, <laughs> this, yeah, this is why we like to have you here, there, Sean. And uh, yeah. talking about preaching, and uh, you know, I, I wanted to chat quickly just about your purchase, the 1977 Saber Brother. Congratulations, oh, I, man. Oh, so thanks, dope. guys. Oh, thanks. I, I man, it's funny too because I've been talking to you guys about that one for a few months, you know, and I. Yeah. Oh, man, I've been, I was on the market when that dropped. I mean, VV Magic, you know how bullish I am on those lightsabers too. And yep. I've been talking to you about it quite a bit. And that 1977 one specifically, I, I was looking on the market for months for that. And then mm. the one day I was on set and someone bought it, tweeted and tagged us in it, said, hey, look what I got for X amount. <laughs> I'm like, oh, come on. The one <laughs> day I didn't go on. And it wasn't for Flora. It was a little bit higher, but still it was just, it was very beyond reasonable, the price. And I just kept messaging the guy, like, please, like, let me know if you plan to sell that thing. Like, let's just, <laughs> I want that so bad. But he, he at least let me know and forward me that he, you know, it was on auction. Like, okay, here we go. What do I need right. to sell here to make this work? <laughs> good for you, man. So, yeah, it was funny too. I have a good story with the day of actually. So, <laughs> so Metaverse Life, uh, Roth, big shout out to, to Roth Ryan. He's a, a good friend I've known for quite some time. And we were together that morning on the job because he knew how big of an auction that was for me. So we're sitting next to each other and he knew like what price I was going to go in at. And I was kept, I kept going back and forth, back and forth and changing the amount. And, and I said, okay, this is the amount I'm going to do. He bids $1 higher than the amount I was going to put in. So it didn't go through. And I saw the final price and I'm like, are you kidding me? Cause I changed it like $80 lower, 80 gems lower. I'm like, did that really just sell 80 gems less than, I was about to buy my heart sinks. And I was like, almost in, I was like, I was like almost in tears. Like, I was like, this is, a, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity here. And I look over at, at Roth and he's laughing at me. He's like, ah, I got it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's, it's in metaverse life's account right now. <laughs> what a dick. I like his videos. Like, I don't know if I like, like him. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah. Wait a minute. Your joke cost me $80, dude. Wait, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. so funny. And you he probably got a really good laugh. Oh, no, yeah. it was hilarious. No, no, no. It's totally fine. Yeah. <laughs> so you don't own it yet. But you no, will. not yet. No. So I, oh, I it's, to, all a, I, it's all a farce. It's all a scam. <laughs> <laughs> I have to enjoy it through his account right now. But uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, but you have uh, visitation troll. rights. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd steal his phone. I'd be like, yeah. you could do it. You could just list it. You, you could list it for, he could list it for that price and you could buy it, but then you'd obviously lose 10% or whatever you'd lose. So uh, that's why I said you, it's not worth it. I'm so pumped on it, man. I'm so pumped on the long term. So it's actually myself and the Commons and Crypto team. We all went on it, went in on it. So oh, that's great. It yeah, we co it together. Yeah. And yeah. So it's it's really I'm, I'm just like I'm glowing still about it. I mean, I'm I mean, just as a fan of Star Wars and just the yeah. fact that I own that is special, but I also have like high expectations for it long term. Yeah. For sure. I think it'd be good. It's sort of like a one on one of one. 
when you look at them like that, like you can picture them as like a like those special mints. I think will have more value than the lower mints. I think they even do now. To be fair, like if you've got a specific yeah. one, it's almost like a one of one, not just a low mint. Like I think like a 1977 would be potentially worth more than like a 41. I agree. You know? like, yeah, I agree. Yeah. And it's uh because it's it's I mean there's even lower numbers than 41. You know they keep the first 40, so there's they could potentially release them later on and that would devalue all of the low mints. You know because well, if it's, it's yeah. yeah to, to, yeah. to, to Vivi's, Vivi's Ma Vivi magic side, she made a comment actually. I think you spoke to Alex about that, and Alex said those will never see the line of day. Right. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, well, that's 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 good information. Isn't yeah, yeah. Alex also said that there was going to be no more golden moments. So. He did say that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll tell you what he says with a pinch of salt. He also said hodl way back in the day. Remember that? Yeah, that was yes, so. I, I don't remember know. That. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I actually wanted to get into some Disney utility stuff. So I actually reached out to the community recently and was just like, hey, what do you realistically think Disney utility could look like? Like, don't give me bullshit answers. And I think Granola Wayfair or something like that also reached out and said, like, are we going to get it? And some people said yes. And other people said no. And it was almost like right down the middle. So I actually wanted to go through just like all these raw tweets with you guys and um, cool. just kind of like get your thoughts on it and see if you think it's like actually what they said was like feasible or, or what have you. So I said, if Disney did offer golden moment holders utility, what do you realistically think it would look like? And we said, hoping for airdrops or first access to selected drops, for example. And then this guy here, CPD OPS or OPS says as a U.S. veteran, Disney give me free access to their parks every year. That's 1 million veterans and so many active duty. There's no reason they couldn't offer that to 4,333 people. I think that there was needs to be a little clarity around this. Maybe it's just discounted or maybe it's just certain days, but like, I thought that was pretty wild. What do you guys think about like that, like that perspective? Like if a million people can get at least one day for free, what does that say about 400 or 4,333? Yeah, I am, uh, I'm unaware of um, military veterans getting free access, but I, I do 100% know that there um, is discounts for them. Um, but yeah, I mean, even, even not getting free access, if, if we got some sort of discounts and stuff, um, you know, maybe on top of, or outside of, you know, say I have a pass, I still get something on top of that. I mean, that'd be awesome. Like I would, I would love that. Right. Yeah. You could, you could easily show like, I mean, if you think about it, yeah, I, I think about it sometimes we talk about it quite a lot is the potential to do anything they want. Like they, they, they released 4,333 volts. I mean, what's that? Like one, was that 1.5 million for times 333? Somewhere around there, wasn't it, that they made? Disney doesn't need $1.5 million. They don't need that. But yeah. they, 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 they're they doing it for, one, it's marketing, because it's they're, they're entering the web web free space. And like, the amount of, if, it, if this does become a big thing, like obviously with the metaverse and that, then it's, it's they're essentially forever, mar they're free marketing forever. Like, right, or, yeah. They're, they're, they're always, and whenever they change hand, they get a fee. It's like the best business model ever. Because once they've made, they've created a digital asset, which costs them next to nothing. Mm. And they've got free marketing from them forever. The least they could do. And if they're, if people are using them, like if they've got utility behind them, say they've got like a, a members club for the NFT holders, like and you can get cheaper drinks, 20% discount off drinks. People, that, that makes them desirable. Like and if you could get into the get into the park for twenty, even if it was twenty percent off, you get twenty percent of all food. Then that gives them value. Not only do you hold these assets, but also gives them like continuous value. And every time they trade hands, it's more revenue for them. So there's there's no yeah. they they can only win from these. So this is this is a business model. It's so it's so like obvious mm. that it will be. They're obviously that the, it's going to be it's going to happen. But it's just a case of what they do with it. You know. How much is a season pass at Disneyland? nowadays if you imagine. um there's different tiers i just renewed um oh man i want to say it was like around sixteen hundred dollars for the year damn okay it's very expensive um but you can pay monthly which is what i do otherwise i wouldn't mm. be able to do it yeah. <laughs> um but i did want to piggyback off of the um oh shoot what were you saying about the part oh the club so you know, you have pass holders, right? They're, they're their own group. You have obviously like 33 members and that's their own group. And there's probably other groups that I'm forgetting, but I would love to see where you get to the point that um, there's, you know, NFT holders, maybe they come up with their own certain name, but, you know, you have enough 
Disney NFT content and NF owners that, you know, it creates this new program. And, you know, maybe that gives you discounts on, on your annual pass and right. you know, discounts then throughout the parks as well. But, you know, I believe this could get to a big enough um, point in time where we could be our own section of Disney and have our own perks and benefits and tiers and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. That'd be great. It's not like we haven't paid money, is it? It's like we've, we've, we've right. paid real money. Like it's right. not like exactly. we haven't, because we've definitely paid more than $1,600 a year to buy these NFTs. True. Yeah. So there's yeah. no reason Just why it's it. not like we're getting anything for free. Like I've still got six figure bloody uh, account with Disney NFTs that, we, that, we've, that we've paid real money for. So right. a lot of us have got multiple of them. Um, it's, it's not like we haven't paid anything. It's not like we're getting right. them for free. You know, exactly. it's like we it's easy to think like, oh, we're getting an airdrop for free, but we're not. We've we've paid for this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And just just think on the top of my head, I mean, like if because people have talked about that, right? I've had conversations with family members, like Disney doesn't give away anything for free. Well, they did right off the bat, they gave a year, year of Disney Plus free to all the Walt statue owners. So yeah, I mean that, that debunks that debunks that right there. But also if we're thinking about okay, season passes, they'll say hypothetically, if you own a wall statue, you get you know season pass every year. Okay, so it's sixteen hundred dollars. That's about seven million dollars a year between four thousand three hundred thirty-three members, right? So mm -hmm. if that was the case, um, let's say I, I would anticipate if that was announced, or if you get like free access to Disney Parks worldwide, no blackout dates, that's crazy, right? That'd be crazy utility. Yeah. Yeah. Hypothetical, hypothetical. Yeah, that would mean, I, like I, would, <laughs> I would anticipate if that was announced, the Walt statue alone could potentially hit. We'll just stay a hundred thousand dollars. I think that's yeah. pretty conservative. We saw all time high, all time high at forty thousand with no no utility. So, if that was the case, they would get six thousand commission off every sale. They would only need to make up for that seven million dollars four thousand three hundred seventy five transactions every year. Hmm. And on top of that, the marketing—that's the thing, right? That's the key. I can only imagine how much value that would bring in marketing, right, for the entire mm. year. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's more than reasonable, in my opinion. Yeah. see what disney does yeah, <laughs> yeah. Makes, you guys seen sense. look at how many comments are on this i didn't even realize that. like no. i've been scrolling for the last like, five ages. minutes but one thing that always hit my head and and i think you know one of you guys brought this up before was just like certain access to specific locations within the park for instance you have star wars nfts you get star wars access if you have like a walt then maybe you get like the whole thing but there's just so many damn ideas and you know yeah. there's a lot of people that aren't that bullish they're like they'll never give away something for free and other people are like are you kidding me like just in our line of thinking where it would make sense not to well they just uh had disney plus day what yes yes yesterday the day before and mm -hmm. Um, I didn't go too in depth because I was traveling and everything, but I believe they were like, you know, doing giveaways at the at the park and whatever and celebration and the whole Disney Plus day. There were there for people that have memberships. They're I I can't remember what they're giving away, but um, you know, they they put some content um on Disney Plus um as like a surprise, like the Thor is now available and um, you know, they're they were basically offering utility through through Disney Plus for for people that have memberships so right. I mean, it's just another sign that that's exactly where they're going yeah i mean you think how, how much does it cost to get disneyland for a day like how much does it cost uh it depends on the it depends on the day um right. it's just an average I, day, it was like a saturday um it's probably going to be like somewhere between 150 and 200 i know like i bought some tickets for the week of thanksgiving and those are 224 dollars so, yeah. so um if, it depends if, on if the season so if it's so you sell so you sell one NFT, someone sells their NFT for say it's 10 grand and they're making so what they get 8.5% of every sale. Or is it is it six they get six and a half and Vivi gets two or they get six percent and Vivi gets two point five. Is that right? Yeah, they get six percent. So six but they get six percent, so they're getting six hundred dollars per sale at ten thousand. So that mm. would easily cover three tickets. So if you can and that's not even like another vertical, you, you could rent your NFT out for the day. And then yeah. they take a percentage of that rental. Exactly. Exactly. Right. 100%. You know, and it's say you need a Walt to get into the to you got you show your Walt. It's four thousand three hundred thirty three. You get your ticket, your entrance, and you get twenty percent off food and drinks for the day. Then it's yeah. obviously going to be like that. That's you could rent it out for say you rent it out for cheaper than it would be for the actual ticket. One, that's marketing because people are going to tweet about it and do whatever. And then two, you've got you're making money off the rental, equal or more so that of the ticket. It's, it's just a no-brainer. There's so many ways they can do it, but it'd be stupid for them not to, to do something are, like that. Exactly. And celebrities are going to come in. They're going to endorse yeah. it. They're going to be excited about it. And yeah. I view it as Disney looks at it 
as a potential way of giving back a little and getting a lot in return. Yeah. Mm. That's really, that's how I view it at least. What are yeah. your guys thoughts on that? Yeah. Like, I think like, the, you know, a lot of the things that you said here was, you know, it, it's not like a lot of things too, is this is a whole new medium. So for instance, like this is a whole new dimension. Like we're going from the physical age into the digital age. So to me, this is like more of a revolution than it is just, sorry, than it is just a new medium. Like before people were saying, Oh, Disney took part in like, Beyblades, they did this, they did that. Like they are always, you know, on the next new trend. But I'm like, this isn't a trend necessarily. Like this is like literally like an entire shockwave of like how the future of our world is going to operate. So like I see them seeing these first golden moments and stuff like that as something way more grand. And the fact that they're like, you know, think like think about how illogical it would be for them to be like, we're going to start our own metaverse and then pawn off our most sensitive IP to Vivi, which mm -hmm. is like a smaller company at the time. And we're not going to think there's going to be some kind of negative implication for us in the future if we did that, if we didn't see a long-term relationship with them. I think that to me just speaks volumes. So, and just going through everybody, like all these different comments that they have, like what you guys were saying too, just from a financial perspective and logistically, like it makes great sense, you know? So I think it's big. I think it's like, I think the utility could be a lot bigger than what people are thinking. And I think like Sean said at the beginning of this was like, you know, wait till the walls are up and then, then come on over to the mansion. Right. In this case, maybe come over to the Disney castle. Yeah. yeah so is that, sorry. It was, it was like, if, if they didn't do that, uh, I've, I've seen a lot of people cause they're saying, Oh, Disney going to do their own metaverse as well. Have you seen that a lot lately? Like people are saying, Oh, they're going to do their own metaverse and then these are going to be worthless. They're not going to take them over. But like, even if they did do their own thing, you're telling me that their first ever assets would not be interoperable. It just wouldn't. It, why would they not bring over their own assets? You got it. Yeah. Like, like imagine if Henry perfect. Ford like made a car in another garage. Yeah. And he like had all the working components and everything and then made a second car and was like, oh, I only like this car now for the future. Like it doesn't make any sense that like you can have like your most sensitive NFTs ever created and just be like, okay, now we're going to do it again. And everyone's gonna be like, well, wait a second. What about this? Like, how come you're yeah. abandoning ship here? Like this shit is important. So sorry to cut in on you, Danny. I'm just like, I'm, I'm passionate about this too. I'm like, no, yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, it makes no sense. Cause obviously people say, oh, why would like Disney, they're going to do their own thing. And they're going to take it. It's just like, how can you, I don't like their thought process just baffles me a little bit. Right? Just thinking, how can that even make sense to you? I think it's just FUD. That's all I think that is. Like that is, there's no actual reasoning behind what they're saying. Mm -hmm. So it yeah, if, if they do do their own ed ed metaverse, these assets are the first ever, they'll be the most valuable unless they're obviously release more scarce ones later on that were like one of ones or whatever. But these are these will be the exception that these will always be looked at in the future as the first ever Disney NFTs. And that is that, that's the line drawn. It would destroy the credibility. Yeah. Like again, like I can't emphasize like this is the first ever people invested thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in these things. Yeah. Because they understand the vision. And like if they just threw them aside, it would destroy their credibility in web three. And it's not gonna happen. I mean, they know that. And also, most importantly, like, I mean, you think they're gonna destroy like the Walt statue? <laughs> like the most the significant, <laughs> yeah, yeah, most yeah. significant, literally one of the most celebrated entrepreneurs in history. I mean, that guy, I mean. Vivi Magic, you know too how sensitive they are over Walt. They are yeah. unbelievably yeah. sensitive over Walt. They wouldn't even let the Walt Disney family use their own name in the museum in San Francisco. Like yeah. it's crazy. It's they're crazy about him. So yeah, I mean it's this is special what the, what they have right now, and mm -hmm. it's so cool that you guys recognize that because long term it's going to pay out big time. And also, I, I know that they've talked about how they're they're looking into like Polygon and other blockchains, but. Guys, I mean, I, I could totally see in the future that these are, I mean, I think it's already happening now. There'll be interoperability between blockchains. I mean, I know Wax, for example, they can yeah. go on in the sandbox and the sandbox yeah. is on the Ethereum blockchain and Wax is on their own blockchain. And yeah. also like, Dis, uh, you know, the Disney films, they used to be on Netflix, right? Mm. And after a few years of being on Netflix, they eventually made their own streaming service. That took years to make. And that's just a streaming service. This isn't wow. even a metaverse, right? We interviewed Michael uh, Bramlage, of, uh, CEO of Quid recently, and he was talking about it takes like five to seven years to create a quality metaverse, like a quality metaverse. And even now, like we're still super early. So, yeah, yeah. it's going to be a long time before they even probably make a stab at that. But, yeah. I mean, it's probably going to happen. It could happen. And they, but I think it, they'll probably have both. And they'll be yeah. interoperable. So sick. And I think the big thing, too, is like if you're convicted 
and you have the time to see the, the future, like, and you can wait five years for it, then, you know, like, it's a lot of fun. Like, this is the thing that I keep saying to people so now good. is like, I'm get to collect. I don't have to worry about like things getting way too far ahead of me. And, and the funniest thing is like, somebody said this on a tweet the other day and it fucking was perfect. It was like, everyone wants to be early until they're early. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and here we are, it's er- yeah. early. And everyone's yeah, like flooding yeah. and don't want to buy and are like scared and like, you know, yeah. and it's just so it's hilarious almost. And like, I, you know, there's so many people that say like, you know, millionaires are made in recessions because like, if you have the liquidity to like buy the right things, then when the next boom cycle happens, you know, you're talking about like people like that bought like ETH when it was like a hundred bucks and then went to like 5,500 and sold, right? Like this is the kind of thing that, you know, you can do. So it's like, it's kind of like if you're convicted and you believe in the future, then it's a great opportunity now, because first of all, I'm calm now when I'm collecting, because I don't feel like things are going to go astronomical. I feel like they're more attainable, like this lamp, you know, I'm like, oh, maybe I'll go back in the market tomorrow and see if I want to get another one. And it's not going to be four grand. Do you know what I'm trying to say? And so it's like, that's the kind of future though, that we might have. Um, So I think it's just like, you know, I think it's interesting about like the conviction thing, right? Because it's just a matter of time now, guys. I think it's just a matter of time. Yeah, it's sort of good that you've um that that's that is nice though. Do you remember you used to go to sleep like after a drop and then you'd wake up and like you'd be panicking, like especially you, Chad. You were like on another planet. Like when, when we like... used to talk, you were like completely <laughs> o- all over the place. Yeah, trying to think. But I, I used to wake up at like. Do you ever wake up at like two in the morning? Like check your phone immediately. Like see what's going on, and then be like have like a panic attack because it's like five k. <laughs> oh, legit. do you remember that partner statue deal we did it was like literally like 4 a.m my time and i didn't sleep and i was like watching partners and i was i was trying to like i forget exactly what we we're doing but i was like shifting some money around and i was like danny can you buy this statue for me because i could feel like it's going to take off again and yeah. it's like 5 a.m he's like man he's like you're just mad he's like you're obsessed man he's like you need to get some sleep <laughs> he buys it for me remember it was like 9k and then went to like yeah, 15 or 20k that that's three hours later yeah, the next day it was like 15k it like went up 6k yeah. and it, you still didn't sell though <laughs> then, no i didn't no you didn't sell i think yeah. then it went all yeah but then i think it went all the way up to like what did it go up to i think it was like that, 20 and it rallied up to like 20 and yeah. then it, I, I don't even know if you sold then but no. I, I just i just hold everything i wish i'd sold at the top man it's so yeah. horrible looking back me oh my god but um <laughs> yeah it is what it is but yeah it was it was wild though i used to wake up like the, i wouldn't even say it like morning to my wife like, or anything like that i'd literally just throw it on my phone <laughs> like, instantly just looking at that and but you become like a, i'm sort of glad it's chilled out a little i bit agree now. yeah because it's sort of like my life was like gone for a bit but the thought yeah. of being able to make 10 grand overnight is it's addictive like you become addicted to that and you, do. you can yeah. especially if you you feel like you're ahead of the market as well like and you can be ahead of the market a little bit you see like the market trend or if you can see the trend happening before it happens which is what we were doing wasn't it we were trying to that was what we were trying to do like th- then that's what became addictive you could try and watch the trend before it happened um but yeah i'm sort of glad it's chilled out a little bit now I'm, I'm, my hair's not going so gray yeah exactly <laughs> it's just everything's a little more logical right yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's not to, add, to add earlier what you're saying, Chad, about pe- the pe- well, majority of people make the most money during a recession or a bear market. Yeah, We're seeing that right now in physical collectibles too. I mean, mm. it's not just digital. It's not just a Web3. I just saw yesterday there's a record sale for Heroes for Hire number one, which is the first appearance of Luke Cage. That's also on Vivi. Wow. The previous sale was around 15K back in 2014 and just sold for $108,000 as a 9A. Oh. And then you saw like Hulk 181, which is the first appearance of Wolverine that's inevitably going to come to VV. That was a 30-ish K book as a 9-8. There's like there's like a couple hundred of them. Um, maybe like three years ago, one just sold like a, maybe a month ago for over 100. And the most recent sale yesterday was 138. And most Same. importantly, the biggest one is the 1952 Tops Mickey Mantle rookie card. Remember that one-on-one NFT video that we did, yeah. guys? Yeah. yeah. There's a 9.5 grade. So this company, they grade it as a 9.5. It's in between a 9 and a 10. Yeah. A 9.5 just sold for $12.5 million. $12.5 million. And the 10, they're saying, Jeremy, Jeremy Padua actually tweeted about this. And a lot of people are saying it too, a lot of auction houses. They estimate the 10, there's only three in existence. One is actually owned by the Diamondbacks, Arizona Diamondbacks uh, uh, owner. And he put it on display at some event, some sports card event as a loan, right? They said they could show it off. And they're estimating that card is going to sell for over $30 million. It's insane. These kind of sales help the entire collectibles market, both Mm. physical and digital. 
Absolutely. Because right. that is a frame of reference. And this is all cash, by the way. This isn't even crypto yet. So when yeah. Bitcoin inevitably goes back up, back to 50K, 100K, what is it going to do for us of these collectibles? Especially when you can buy them directly on VV. Very exciting stuff to think about. Wow. Sure. So I've got a bit of a thing on this. So it's funny. Like, I think like some of these cars and these physical items, I think they're at like a peak time to sell. In my opinion, I know a lot of people think, oh no, they're just going to continue to go up in value. But what I think is that digital will, you know, I'm not saying that it's going to take over, but I'm saying it's going to have a big piece of the market because I think all of our viewpoint and vantage points and social capital is all going to shift digital eventually when like people would rather see something as a hologram or in a metaverse rather than like an in-person thing, especially if it has different aspects of utility, like it's animated or does other things and it's super limited and scarce. Or if it's like kind of sharing that same IP, like, you know, Sean, you did that video on like comics, not being fast and mills or reprints, you know? So I think like, that's kind of where I think the future could be. And I know a lot of people disagree, but I'm really bullish on the digital. Like, think about this. Think about Marvel comics, number one SR behind me right now in my actual office as a hologram moving spinning only 600 in the world and think about then i could then you know it's it's completely safe even if somebody tried to steal it it's in somewhere else right i can take it anywhere in the world i can show a guy on a plane in first class and be like look what i have here let me project it in front of you like that's the kind of future that i see and then on top of that go to different events and be like let's say i'm giving a presentation all of a sudden i can just pull out all my best assets put them right behind me while people are viewing me you know what i'm trying to say like mm-hmm. that is maybe I'm talking 10, 15 years out, but I think that's where the world's going. And I don't think in my opinion that a plastic thing that's like, even though it has a lot of historical implications and value, don't be wrong. I'm not trying to say it's, it's not, and, and the scarcity will probably be beyond belief, but then it's also not um, like, it, it also can't last forever. Right. That's the other thing about a digital asset. So I'm kind of like, I think we're going to start seeing a shift. And I'm not saying that the physicals maybe maybe I'm wrong, it'll be even more expensive, but I do think the digital is gonna come in fucking fast and strong. I agree. Yeah, yeah I mean, if you had all this stuff in your house and your house burned down tomorrow, I mean, sure you have insurance for some of these collectibles, but can you replace them? Mm. You know, whereas say mm. my, my phone burns, I can go get a new phone and I can log into my account and I still have all my collectibles there. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. Like, I'm just like, I think I'm like seeing, I'm either seeing the stars or I'm, I'm like, but I'm not, like, I'm just, I'm really <laughs> bullish on this shit. Man. No, I, you're, you're, so, you're so spot on, man. I, I think the physical yeah. market is going absolutely crush and continue to go up for sure. Yeah. But to, uh, to your point, the thing that separates the physical and digital, right? The digital accessibility. Accessibility right. is so big, man. Like I, I have friends in different parts of the country or par- different parts of the world. I can't ship things to him because they have a corrupt mailing system, for example. Right. You know, and it, it's awful, but I can send him these comics instantly and he can buy, sell, and trade it instantly around the world. Yeah. You know, I mean, man, when you start getting other countries involved, which is why localization is so important, right. when you start getting other countries involved, I mean, what's going to stop you know, like a lot of people in China? And I mean, you could probably see like Dubai princes getting involved in this stuff, you know, like who, yeah. who knows? I mean, really, like, yeah. I mean, the fact that you can enjoy these instantly around the world is unbelievable. And it's, yeah. I feel the same way, Chad. Like every okay. day. It's about it. that, is, that is the next bit, though, isn't it? Because it's like, if it's so easy, like if you obviously, uh, Sean, you try, if you sell a comic on eBay or if you sell a comic and you've got to ship it somewhere, you've got to ship it, you've got to pay for security uh, um, postage, you'll pay for tracked, everything like that. And then you've got to have insurance. Where on Vivi, you can sell it. You like you can buy a comic on drop day for like five hundred dollars, and then if it, yeah. it, it 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 goes up to fifteen hundred, you sell it, you've instantly got that money. Like where else in the world can you do that? Like it's just if you've got an actual real comic, it might take it. It might take five years to go up that much. Right. Um, but that's the risk. That is the risk to reward, isn't it? Like, but it's also there's also something nice about having like a physical comic, like the artwork having it in front of you. I don't think it will go away, but like you say, it's the and if, if eventually, if things are that valuable, like you talk about that Mickey Mantle, there's no way that's sat in some guy's house, is there? That's in a safe, locked up, not even being enjoyed. Like, you can look at it that way, can't you? Like, if that's worth 10 to 30 million, no one's got that locked up in their house. <laughs> yeah. No, it's so true. And I also wanted to ask this, there's a bit out there, but... Um... You know, like I was recently looking at the market and I was like, okay, we've got this new Fantasia NFT now, Mickey, like Fantasia NFT. And I was like, then there's like the one that holders or the reservation called uh, code for like a blind box or something that we'll get if you landed the lamp. And then I was like, okay, then we have Fantasia and then we also have Steamboat. 
And I'm like, man, is Steamboat's value going to get diluted now? Because some of these new NFTs look similar in terms of that thing that they're standing on. And I wanted to kind of ask Vivi Magic because I'm like, I love Steamboat and I don't want to see him founder, you know? So yeah, um, what's your take, man? When I saw the the NFT announcement and saw like how how good it looks too, I was just like, oh man, yeah. <laughs> like, there goes Steamboat, <laughs> like, right. cause you know, I've been, I, I love that collectible. Um, but this one is, he's valuable in just a different respect. Um, okay. like, you know, obviously the movie was, was a big film and, you know, you go to Disneyland and that hat is a huge, you know, beacon of what, as you walk under to go to the hotel and then, um, I'm going to be doing a video in the in the next day or two about my trip to um, a, a, you know abroad and and design Paris and everything. And this character is really loved there. Um, and so I'm going to show video and, and photos of all that. Mm. Um, but that was something that really stood out to me. And he sort of, I feel like, whereas Steamboat is the tie to the beginning of Disney, I feel like Sorcerer is the tie to animation like if that makes sense mm. like i feel like he kind of represents a different part um like that's where the animation and and the films like really started to take off was after fantasia and so like i feel like he's sort of the the representative of that um and you know we obviously have the hat nft and i feel like you know they didn't do that for no reason like um it, it just he's important for his own reasons so yeah i mean i think for me they should be on par um, because they're important for, for their own rights, but it'll be interesting to see what, what people do. I mean, people do like the color and, um, you know, if, if it has, you know, I, have we seen animation yet? I think it said it has animation, right? Or no, does it? The Uncommon's animated, isn't it? Instead of Yeah. The, yeah. Have we seen a, a peak of it at all or? No, I'm assuming oh. it's the clip from the film where he's like pushing the water up in the air. Like, you and know, if that comes out and it looks like yeah. spot on, I mean, yeah, I've got like a snow globe, I'm doing that. Um, yeah. And it, and it comes out and it's spot on. I mean, people are going to go nuts for it. So yeah. I feel like they should be at the same level personally, but you know, I don't know how they're going to do it. Yeah. I hope they don't devalue Steamboat anymore or the hat. I know. Because, yeah. I mean, Chad, me and you bought ours at a very similar time. Do you remember? <laughs> how much did you well, pay? I bought it the height. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, I, if I take, I paid, so for my, for Steamboat, I paid 5,100 gems and it's yeah. not even like a good mint <laughs> so that's what i paid for that and for the hat i've got number 65 i paid 10 grand well wow. i traded it i traded <laughs> the hat for a todd and at the time it's really good deal. <laughs> i paid 15 grand for two things that are worth less than a grand but you still got some segment like the low mint's good brother oh it means know? nothing now now i'm thinking about it i just want to just yeah to, to end this <laughs> i know yeah I know it's tough. I paid a lot for mine as well, but I mean, yeah. I, I still don't, you know, I didn't it sell when me. I got low. I just, I still believe in the piece and overall. Yeah. And yeah. I just think, you know, people are pretty fickle. And so I think this new one's going to come out and yeah. they're going to want to go to that because that's a, you know, new shiny toy. Um, yeah. But I, I believe they shouldn't, one should not be higher than the other. Well, if one wants to be higher, I'm still going to pick Steamboat. I'm always going to pick Steamboat because he was the first. Um, yeah. But, you know, I just, I, over the long run, I see them being pretty, pretty even, personally. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There's similar mints as well, right? Because it's like, what is it? Is it, uh, what's Steamboat? How many mints is the ultra rare? I think it's like just under 7,000. Am I right? Yeah. Like six something? Between six, six and 7,000, isn't it? So yeah. I think the uncommon is like 8888, eight, 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 right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's not, not too, not too different. Yeah, so I don't, I don't, I, I think it's funny. It's nice to look, I think it's quite funny to look back and see what we pay. But to be honest, it was all profit anyway. So it doesn't really make any difference. Like back then it was all, it was all uh, play money. Me. You couldn't withdraw, <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, some of it, some of it was, it wasn't all profit, but you know, it wasn't, I look at it as like, I bought stuff that did well and I bought stuff that didn't do so well. Um, Same. But, but one thing I think you mentioned there that was really smart was like, like, because a lot of the OGs or people that came in early had like, 
cash pretty much like they had a ton yeah. of gems so they're able to move it around and mm-hmm. so when you're buying like when i bought like spider-man for seventeen thousand, i didn't buy it with like 17 grand from my bank like i no. bought it for money i made within the app and i think the issue yeah. is is that some people went and actually bought spider-man for like eighty thousand right from their bank yeah and that's where I think people can get. So I think it's smart to be calculated. That's one thing what I always tell people is I never FOMO. Like if something goes up, it'll have a day to come back down. And if it doesn't, then there's always the next best opportunity. But I think it's really important that like you train yourself because like the, the problem is it's not like a stock. You get emotionally attached to these characters. You're like, I'm yeah. a Star Wars guy. I have to have Darth Vader, right? Yeah. And the issue is then you just bump, jump into it. But if you couldn't get it and then you set aside 200 bucks a week, you'd eventually get there. You know what I'm trying to say? So I think it's just being smart about like some of these decisions because some people are too, they're too quick to to move and, and get in a lot of trouble, you know? Yeah, it's easily done. I mean, we we spent, so, I mean, we spent so much time in the app, you know, and we was, it was because you couldn't get it out at that point either. Like there was no way to remove your money. So yeah. it would all become like play money. It was like, it, it didn't, I never had, I didn't have any anywhere near that amount in my bank, you know, like anywhere near, but I couldn't take it out. So it didn't, I wasn't emotionally attached to it. Like, because it was just gems. It was just numbers on a screen. So, but I was buying stuff that, God, if I did, I mean, I'd never do that in real life, you know, but it, it wasn't real at that point. And then obviously when it became real, then it's like, okay, well, I spent that much money on that. But it's, it, it is, uh, it, it's, it, it was different back then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was the toughest thing. Like when I first started too, I was focusing entirely on low mids. Like that was, and I'd never yeah. really understood the importance yeah. of liquidity. <laughs> no. no i just like them yeah it's a good strategy <laughs> now but long term man i i still it's the really the only way to differentiate value right and we know yeah. there's value in low mint so that's right it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a long-term thing but the demand isn't there yet but when it when it will it, it's inevitable in my opinion yeah. yeah and i think we saw the demand like when when everything was peaking like when wealth was exceptionally popular you saw mm-hmm. people paying like more way more money than the floor for like mints that were even slightly better like a sub 1000 a sub 500 but now there's just so much volume and mm-hmm. like you said we don't have enough people in in all these different collectibles that just you can get sub 100s now at a discount yeah. but if you pick the right one like maybe like you know like i don't know like some really popular character and you get a sub 100 if you're ready to hold on for the long term and if you're invested that then you'll be okay in my opinion but i think like if you're trying to do it now to flip that's where like i think you'll get caught yeah yeah for sure like you we i mean we bought we were i think we all bought low, lower mints we all liked lower mints like because we saw yeah. like the, the the potential there but if you i mean they did all right for me like if if i was to buy a lower mint like because everything sort of retraced massively but if you bought a lower mint earlier on it didn't retrace as much because all you had to do is find a collector for it mm-hmm. and, cause, and they are out there and you would get similar price to what you what you paid for it so it's they they don't retrace as much depending what if as long as it's like a a blue, a blue chip or whatever then it right. didn't really trace so much and you could get a lot of your money back but it's um it's i still think that i still think that's going to be the main differentiator because if a lot of people do come into the app that have got money that's that's going to be the only thing that they differentiate between the lower the mint the more value it's going to have because that's the only thing that separates them true yeah well, good. So before we take off, I was hoping to go around the table and just get a kind of a depiction of what everybody's up to with their collecting strategy. Now, if you're still making moves on flipping, if you're just holding, if you're recircling, if you're, you know, taking out money, like kind of like what, like, what are you doing kind of for the long term stretch? Um, just so we can give some people like maybe some advice or insight as to what our strategies are. So maybe we'll start off with like BB magic, and then we'll go to uh, Sean and then Danny. Yeah, so for me, um, I had built up a little bit of liquidity um, and then was just saving that for drops. And then from time to time, I would buy something in the market that just spoke to me. Mm -hmm. Um, But for the most part, I was trying to hold on to it. And I've gotten to, my strategy is I've gotten to the point where I pick and choose my drops. I don't go for every drop. I go for the things that either I see a lot of value in or I see uh, certainly long-term value in or that I just love. And so, you know, my thing is I go for every single Disney drop. Um, I think I own every single Disney collectible on the app. Um, but you know, I don't necessarily go for every single Marvel drop, um, you know, and, and other brands as well. I may not go for every single one. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm stretched pretty thin right now. So, uh, there's only so much I can do. I wish, (laughs) I wish I could do more because if, if I had more liquidity, I would 100% be in there and picking up more of the things I pick up, you know, more golden moments and more steamboat Willie and 
just certain characters and, and IP that pops out to me, I would certainly go harder on, especially some of the stuff that's like really, really, really below retail that isn't necessarily like the top IP, but um, you know, I see it as a possible future character or something, whether it be Moon Knight or, or you know, the zombies or something else where I could see them fitting in later. Um, you know, I, I like to look at those as well as, as potential, but again, a long-term holder and a speculative hold. It, it may not play out the way I want, but if I'm, you know, if it's 15 gems right now, how much, that's not really that much of a gamble, right? So that's kind of my strategy. Sweet. Yeah, the same. I, I I don't go for every drop anymore unless, you know, I, I believe in the IP or the comic long term. Yeah. So like for the comics, especially, we know like if you go over a comic and you get a comment, you'll likely get one under retail. Like it's just it's going to it's going to happen. Right. So you got to be particular on what you go for. Unfortunately, right now, at least. Um, so if a comic drops, like, for example, the, the FA group comic, I mean, that's a that's a really valuable comic. So I had no problem going for that one. Um, mm. I almost sold that pretty quickly. But yeah, stacking liquidity is really important, I think, right now, because, I mean, Chad, you've talked about this in the very beginning. you got to think about what's coming, right? And I think about that every day, especially for comics. There already have been some amazing comics that have dropped, but there are still a lot more to come. And we don't even know about DC yet. And there's some massive grills on from DC. So, yeah, I think it's important just to understand, like, what comics are out there that could potentially come and just be ready to you know, make big moves. Nice. Yeah, um, to be honest, I'm still buying low mints. Um, <laughs> oh, well, I've got, yes. I'm still wasting my money on low mints. Right. So, I mean, like if you know the market on, I mean, yeah. I know I buy them because I know them. And that's pretty much the only reason why I buy them, especially yeah. if like a new, what I look for is, is when a significant, I'm not, I'm not buying low mints of stuff that I don't think it's going to do well. It's still the same plan for, if it's if it's not a significant comic or it's not a significant thing, then I won't look for it. But if you if I like AF fifteen, for example, I was looking on the common because obviously the common is the main, it's the original one. When that dropped, I was lucky enough to get the uncommon on the drop, um, which was great. Uh, and I was first of all, I was looking in the. Uh, I always go to the 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 filter and then go mm -hmm. lowest mint first. And if you can picture in your head, I always try and look at what the similar collectible would do. So if I was looking at AF15 versus Marvel Common 1, and I know I've got a, uh, an MC1 that's sub 1K, and I'm looking at the prices of that, and okay, well, they're, they're the cheapest one's 1K. And if I see anything around that price, I know there's five times less mints. So if I see anything around 1K, I'm grabbing it. I don't, there's no question, I'm just buying it. Right. So one popped up, number two, 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 three, or something like that, so which is like number 40 sub light of, of, of the first mint so that come up for one 250 i bought it straight away and i'm, I'm like i know that's going to be a safe bet because if you know the market and you can basically like uh put it up against something else you can find the value out before everyone else and if you can be convicted in that if you do that for every single drop and you know what the value is going to be before you buy it then you, you you're going to be you're going to be on to a winner i sold that for uh, three and a half thousand like the uh, a, a, a day later and i paid 1250 for it and it's moves like that. That's why mm. I buy low mints because I know the market. So a, a, bit, a bit more than the normal stuff anyway. Fuck, those are all good points. Yeah. So I'll share with you a little thing that I've learned from way back. And I, I think you probably all know this, but this came back from like when I started collecting and I wish I would have done it. Well, now I'm doing it, but I wish I would have done it then. Was like when you have collectibles that went to massive ATHs, like all-time highs when like like for instance like when walt went to forty-eight thousand, and now it's back down to five what happens is there's so many more holders in that pool that don't want to sell it at a loss which and and, I'm, and you may disagree but which could also not saying that this is the main reason but could also artificially inflate the floor because what happens is is that in comparison to new collectibles that might be just as worthy right so as an example like darth vader for instance dropped in a bear market if that would have came out at the same time as Walt, it's possible that Darth Vader would have been five to six K right now as well, because maybe that all time high would have been something crazy like 30 K. Yeah. And so what I do is like, just like what happened with Todd and Rizzo back in the day was like Rizzo was that one that was already had the density already had a lot of people holding it and was like, our, it was always two to four K and Todd was like, you know, 200 bucks, but nobody really gave a shit about Todd. And so my point is I'm looking at all the collectibles now that are dropping that are major that nobody gives a shit about because they didn't have the run because we're in a bear market. 
So that's kind of my thinking around it is like, what's the ones that didn't, you know, fly yet that are, are just as significant empirically significant in terms of like, you know, how you would assess it from like popularity, scarcity, first to the blockchain, all that stuff. Um, and so that's kind of what I'm trying to do is just assess that, but I keep flipping until I find something I like, and then I hold it. But the hardest part is, is like building liquidity right now. You can't really, cause unless you're putting new cash in. So it's, yeah. it's tough. Yeah. That's a similar, similar strategy to looking at like say with low mid, yeah, like, you're, yeah, right. you're, look, you're looking at the comparatively what it would be like, you compare it, like say a new collectibles come out. You don't, no one knows what that price is going to be, but you can sort of make an educated guess on what it might, it might be comparatively. So um, maybe we're saying the same thing then, Danny, yeah, maybe I, so, I misinterpreted. Yeah. you're right, buddy. Like, so yeah, like if you're looking at, like you said, something else that was similar value, similar popularity, you're yeah. going, okay, well, that's what it is now. And yeah. I know what it was in the all-time high. Then let me put my marbles in there. That's smart. Yeah. 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 And like you said, that's a good point because if a lot, like you said, a lot more people were holding Walt from a higher price than Darth Vader. So if, and I see what you're, I see what you're saying now. So if, if they both released at the same time, same exact mints, they potentially could have been very similar prices, but because a lot of people bought Walt at 15 K plus, they're less likely to sell at a loss. So, so Vader people haven't lost as much money. So they're a lot likely to sell at a, a lower price. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm with you. And that, I've seen that time and time again on here, but I mean, I could be wrong. Like, I mean, I, this is just I like a speculation, right. but yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. Yeah, holy shit that was a big talk that was a lot of fun <laughs> thanks everybody oh I, I feel like i could just keep doing this but i feel like we all need water and like some re-energy and maybe magic's like chad i did this for you i just got off this flight from france like you can start in this conversation what a champion what my a eyes champion. are a little heavy i'm not gonna lie <laughs> yeah you're so awesome yeah no you guys are all great like honestly these chats mean a world to me i think you know there's so much value that comes from them it was a lot of fun today um, if you haven't subscribed or followed any of these people yet, I mean, I'm almost certain that there's maybe like one random person that's viewing this that hasn't. So <laughs> go, go do that now. Um, and yeah, like, and, and we'll continue to kind of update you in the future. And we're here for the long run guys. Like we're, we're not just in here for the flips and we, we love VV. We love what they're doing. We see the vision. Um, and we're developing such a strong community, right? I mean, damn like it's really starting to take off now um you know thanks to all the leadership from all these people in here so uh so thanks guys it was a lot of fun thank, thank you all right see you later see you,